Hi, Kat here for Lightweight Digital. In this video, we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. So the subject is going to be a little bit more expansive than usual. However, we're going to be covering some basics with respect to polygon flow, subpatch modeling, or otherwise referred to as box modeling in some cases, and just how to view that polygon flow. So that once we are working with our model, we know that it's going to have a nice topology and it will work really nicely once we get into layout and ready it for rigging. It'll have nice mess deformation if we're working with bones or other displacement uh, tools and it will render correctly. So I've just got a simple box in here and we're going to talk a little bit about something called sub patch modeling. Now I don't have the sub patch model mode engaged right now even though it says sub patch. This is just the sub patch type that we're selecting. Now there are two modes in the Lightwave Modeler that you can work with directly. One is sub patch which is for quads and then Cudmel Clark which is for uh, triangles or quads that can mix together with possibly n-gons, but I don't really recommend working with n-gons uh, for sub patch modeling if at all possible. There are all kinds of issues that can result from it, and it's just better for mathematics purposes to be working with two or three polygon based objects. Let's take a look at this box. Now you'll notice that I'm working in a view called weight shade in two of the viewports. This isn't necessary for the top viewport windows, but for the perspective view it becomes very handy because I can actually see the edges of an object. So let's take for example this top polygon and I'm going to hit B to bevel it and I'm going to just add a little bit of geometry here and this is a technique that has been talked about a little bit in many circles over the years and it's just box modeling. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'm just going to be creative and make something that looks kind of neat. So going to keep using that bevel tool, sneak some geometry in here, and I'm also just hitting B, then control to conform or constrain my mouse so I don't get it to drag off with angles, although I can use angles if I want, but I want something that's kind of clean and will give me a nice result by the time I'm done. When I am done, just hit the Enter key, drop the tool, and then double click in any gray area that's blank. Generally, this is what these areas are reserved for. That's what they actually exist. So you can click up in here and you'll be able to drop a polygon selection, just like that. Okay, so now that I've got something like this, let's hit that Tab key, which will engage subdivision. And we now have something that Looks like a little plug or a knob or something like that. Maybe like a little cigarette lighter, who knows. Let's add some more detail to this. And I am working in the straight non-subdivision modes for a very specific purpose. And that's just so I can see what the mesh flow is doing without confusing myself as to where I am. Because sometimes when you're looking in a mode like this, it's a little bit difficult to see what's what because we know that this is inset but where is it selected from now once you have a general shape you can start playing around with things a little bit more but now that I've got something like this let's just drag this up a little bit more and maybe we'll do something like a little engine nozzle or something okay so here we've got something that's giving us a little flow not bad not great but with some additional slices and geometry cuts, uh, we can make it feel more square or boxy um, or, you know, add more cuts so that we can add details off the sides of it, that sort of thing. So let's start with a couple of interesting cuts. Now I'm going to work in the sub patch division mode for the moment, and I'm just going to slice across certain pieces of geometry, being very careful to slice all the way through so that we're not causing any problems with anything. Okay, once we're done with that slice, we can hit cut. All right, and we can see that we've got an extra little ring in there. And this is going to be something that I can select now. 
and I can do other additional things like use that multiply tool and we can thicken it. But now we've got a problem, which is based off of the selection and the geometry here, it may start to twist things underneath the underneath of itself. So having a good polygon workflow comes down to just basically being able to determine what's what. I need to back that out for a second because I hit the tab key without it being deselected. So we've got mixed polygon versus not polygon, but it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, a couple of slices in here will fix this problem and we can just make some adjustments. Okay. And let me select this ring around here and we will move it up a little bit or maybe down a little bit. And there we go. So now that polyflow is working. Now, if you want to see this in a slightly higher resolution, you can most certainly do that. Let's hit the O for options. And under the mesh elements, you're going to find a thing that gives you the control over how many sub patch display divisions you're going to be working with. This is very similar in Lightwave layout for display uh, subdivisions. And if you're ever going to freeze the model, this is the factor by which it will be frozen. So let's go to construct and we'll say freeze. And now we've got subdivisions of six having frozen that mesh. And you'll notice that it's still in quads, which is great. But we've got some non-planar polygons in here, likely due to that push. So let's back out of this and fix that issue completely. So easiest to do it is to do it when we're in this mode. I have a feeling where that problem's coming from. So we'll just back out of that. Back out of that. Yep. Okay. So just push this back in a little bit. Okay. Now let's hit tab and we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Okay. So we can still add more detail here. It's not a problem. Let's take a slice there. So we're still working with quads. And let's say freeze that object. And now it's all quite smooth. And this is till, still technically a polygonal object and we can tab it again to re-engage sub-patch subdivisions and we can continue to model working in that mode or go back to polygons and then start adding additional details. And one other thing I want to talk about, just undoing some of this here, is that there's the ability to display the polygon normal. When you have a normal or a polygon selected, typically it's a good idea to have something called show normals enabled and the show normals enabled will allow you to view the direction that that polygon is actually facing and if you run into any issues trying to figure out what's what here you are you've got the direction indicator of where that face is pointed this is extremely handy when you're working with a model that has a lot of uh, curves and like recesses in it, um, possibly folds. You're trying to figure out exactly which direction a particular face is going. This is something that will certainly help you out as it will quickly give you an idea as to which way something is actually pointed. Now, there is a function um, which you probably run into. Let's go to another layer. I'll demonstrate this. Just again, simple box and we're not going to do anything other than just create it. And let's look at it from the other side. It has no other side. But if we select it, we know that the polygon normal is facing that particular direction. So if we're looking at it from underneath or from the back, if it was the other way around, we know that this is facing and can be seen through. But on this side, this is the polygon 
and you can flip that using the F key. So if you ever run into a situation on your organic model where something is flipped over, you can easily flip it around and it can vastly improve or solve problems that you've encountered by doing sophisticated cuts or other detailing on a model. So let's just do one more smooth shift here. Let's go multiply. Going to thicken actually on this one. And let's see if this creates this without creating any bad polys, triangles and n-gons being the bad polys because I want to keep all this as quads. So let's hit tab and then we can see how much that's altered our mesh. It's created actually a nice little you know, uh, plastic knob from or radio knob from uh, some old car or something. If we want to make these curves a little bit less drastic, obviously adding more cuts is the way to go. So let's add some more cuts at the top just to smooth this out. Okay. Again, shift K. And then control as I'm drawing the tool across and it helps keep it in a linear straight across cut. Let's hit tab again and now we can see how those cuts have tightened up the edges and that really helps to improve things at least from this look if this is what we're after. All right, let's save this. And we'll get rid of this plane over here for a second. So we'll save that again. And let's send it over to layout. Because as I was mentioning before, with regards to the subpatch divisions, if we wanted to match that look in Modeler, we would need to match the so patch vision. Now we're also looking at this in a mode that could be distracting for some users, and that is with the subdivision cage on. Under the view, so again, D, general, there's an option here called show subpatch cages. We can turn that on or off. It's actually quite handy to have on sometimes because if you're working with bones or another displacement or something and you need to kind of see what the original box based mesh was looking like that sub patch cage is what that display is working in so let's go to the sub to batch subdivision menu here we've only got it working at three we were at six before so six and let's close that window Okay, let's crease this to six, all right, eight. And I think what we've done here is back in Modeler. Ah, yes. I don't actually have that layer selected because I left it in there. So let's go back to layer one, match it, which was six, boom, now it's smooth. Now, this is just the mesh subdivision. If you want to have this as a smoothed object in terms of its surface, you still need to go and enable smoothing, and it'll smooth that problem out. And of course, the smoothing angle is going to determine how smooth it looks, but that subdivision number, if this is what you were working in over in Modeler, and you want it to look the same over in Lightwave Layout, that's the amount of subdivisions that you need to match that. And of course, you'd want this to match and render. Let's go to camera view. Okay. So if you didn't have this set to six and you lifted the default of three, 
watch the disparity here. Looks kind of rough looking. So that's obviously not the same as the other. We need to change this to six so that it's matching our subdivision display mode. And now you get a match. All right, we're going to expand more on this topic. So do check out those videos here on the official Lightweight 3D YouTube channel, and we'll see you soon.